And Display 2.1, which is our proprietary uh, system optimization software, it uses a, uh, a calculation process called numerical optimization uh, in order to calculate the ideal physical configuration of the array, the splay angles and the tilt angle. And then once it's done that for you, then it will calculate the individual DSP settings for each of those cells within the array. And the objective of that calculation is to give coherent summation on the audience surfaces where people's ears are. The early line array designers, they were uh, quite obsessed, frankly, with producing isophasic wavefronts at the loudspeaker grills, which would then propagate to the audience. We're obsessed with producing <clears throat> coherent summation where people's ears are, where it really matters. No, one, no one's up there listening to the loudspeaker system. They're down here where you are. So it, it makes sense to focus your attention to coherent summation where the audience is. And so that's where MLA starts to differentiate itself from a, tr tr a traditional line array system. So now I'll show you how easy it is to get the results you've just experienced. The, these are screenshots taken from display 2.1 in the configuration of the system that, uh, that you heard a few minutes ago. So first of all, you measure a 2D slice of the room using a laser tape measure, a very simply shaped room like this. It took me about two, uh, two minutes. Then you position the array within the room. You tell it where the audience start and the audience uh, stop is. And then you move on to the next stage. And this is where you determine uh, the surface properties of the, of the system. It starts you out with an obvious default um, of where the audience is and where it isn't, but you're in control of that. You can change the surface properties of any of those lines that describe this 2D slice through the venue. The green bit is where the audience is, the red bit there's non audience, and the blue bit is hard avoid, which is the, which is the stage area. <clears throat> So this is also the place where you can determine the SPL profile. And we've got these two, uh, two boxes here in the, uh, the bottom right-hand corner, start delta and stop delta. And that is where you type in how much louder you want it to be towards the front and how much quieter you want it to be towards the back. Um, and then the software goes and uh, figures out how to calculate the filters in order to achieve that. It's, it's, as, it's as simple as that. Once that's done, then it's time to calculate the display angles. With an MLA mini system, this takes between one to two minutes, and the, the calculation time is all based on the size of the array and the size of the room. The more uh, speakers and the more um, <clears throat> uh, measurement points within the room, the calculation points, then the longer it takes, but it's still very, very quick. Once you've got those um, display angles, then you can look at the rigging plot, um, look at the loads and so on, um, <clears throat> And this gives you all the information required to, um, to safely fly the array. Now, while the, uh, the system is being rigged, then Display 2.1 is calculating the, the DSP filters. And this will take between about 2 and 10 minutes, again, depending on the, uh, on the size of the system. These, these eight box arrays solve it about sort of three or four minutes on an average laptop. You don't need something crazy to, um, uh, to, to use Display 2.1. This is also the point where uh, you see these, these sliders here on the left-hand side. Remember back in the, the slide that um, Simon showed you about the Royal Albert Hall, where the hard avoid was, was slid over a bit? This is where you decide how important it is for the optimizer to hit a certain target for you. Um, it could be that you want a very, very smooth um, uh, SPL and frequency response for the audience. That's your most important factor. In that case, you might want to turn that optimization target up a bit uh, and compromise the other two. Um, or you might decide that your hard avoid is the most important thing because you're using hard avoid, say, at the back of the audience to control noise pollution. Um, so you can increase the importance of that and decrease the importance of the, of the other two factors. So this is where you choose the mix. But by and large, the defaults um, that you see here where um, the, the, from the audience, the non-audience, the hard avoid regions, it's a third, a third, a third in terms of optimization importance is, is a great default. It's only if you need to do something particularly unusual that you'd want to move any of those sliders. So by the time this has finished calculating the filters, you've probably almost finished rigging your array. So you're actually ready to go. Um, there's no um, uh, disturbance of the workflow of... Um, <clears throat> Uh, of setting up the system. And of course, as you heard just a few minutes ago, when we switched this on, we heard what you just heard then. We didn't spend hours uh, messing with it because it was a demo. We wanted it to sound particularly good. It sounded like that just from the point when we switched it on. We didn't have to put in any extra effort. 
You can also view the results of the, uh, of the optimization. And we've got some very powerful visualization tools here, but in the top right-hand corner, we've got something which is familiar to everyone, which is a frequency response curve. The, um, <clears throat> the yellow curve is the frequency response uh, at a reference position. We've set it in this situation as the mixing desk. And then as you, in the top left hand, if you sort of move this white star that you can see, if you move that around that plot, then the software will in real time instantaneously calculate the frequency response of the system there. So very, very easily you can visualize the frequency response at every point in that shell around the building so you can check um, how, your, how your system is working. And after you get used to using MLA products, you get used to the fact that you can believe what this display tells you as well. Um, it, there's, a, there's a direct correlation between what happens here and what you then go in here when you go out into the, uh, into the audience areas. So, <clears throat> just to remind you as well, all of the um, MLA mini systems can be controlled by ViewNet, which is a companion uh, control and monitoring software application which runs on a, a laptop or tablet PC. And you can either connect that via the USB port or via um, Ethernet and, and a Merlin uh, network management hub. ViewNet is where you can do the classic things like uh, parametric EQ, time delay, mute the system, zone it, and, and so on. Um, you can also monitor things like amplifier temperature and so on.